wishes to thank the Armstrong Park Company for relinquishing their regular presentation of Armstrong Circle Theater so that tonight you may see the all-star jazz show. Timex, the world's largest manufacturer of watches. More people buy Timex than any other watch in the world. Now, Timex brings you live from New York City, the second Timex All-Star Jazz Show with Gene Copa. <laughs> and Cozy Cole. with Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Jack T. Garden. <laughs> and George Shearing. <laughs> Miss J.P. Morgan. Jerry Mulligan. <laughs> the Dukes of Dixieland. and his great back. I want you to meet, ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, Gary Moore. Oh. Thank you very much. Hello, dear, and good evening again. And may I say to all of you gentlemen assembled here tonight that I feel privileged just to be allowed to walk into the joint and be here with you, so close to all the men and the music that I have loved for so very long. Several years ago, I can remember I passed a small jazz cellar out in Kansas City where Winnie Minone and his band were playing. And out in front was a sign hung, and it simply said, Come in and hear the truth. 
And that is what we invite you to do here this evening. Come in and hear the truth. Now, you've already heard some of it from Lionel Hampton and his great band. And in a few seconds, you are going to hear some more from the man who first led Lionel down the righteous road out in Los Angeles back in the 30s. Well, since then, that man has emerged as the real giant of jazz who has been spreading jazz and American goodwill all over the world. And here he is, the star of the first Timex All-Star Jazz Show, the best ambassador jazz ever had, Louis Satchmo Armstrong.
my father said to my uncle Herschel, he said, someday our satchmo's gonna stop for a Timex commercial. <laughs> yes, tonight Timex is proud to be presenting the second Timex All-Star Jazz Show with great stars like Louis Armstrong, and Jack T. Garden. Come along with me. Along the Mississippi. We'll take a boat to the land of dreams. Steam down the river, down to New Orleans. A band there to meet us. I'm on a dig a tramp bone coda. <laughs> At the risk of making myself unpopular, I'm going to ask our audience, please don't clap because, you know, the guys appreciate it, but sometimes you're on the wrong beat and it kind of bugs them a little. Huh? <laughs> Jack, at the beginning of the second Time X All-Star Jazz Show, I invited everybody to come in and hear the truth, and what you guys just played was the truth. Well, authentic anyway. You know Tony Perenni over there. Oh, sure, Tony. Yeah, he used to play on the Mississippi River boats. Sure. Right and back to him, we got Chubby Jackson there, huh? Yeah, Hi, he Chubby. used to... Hi, Gary. Hi. He's authentic. He used to play on the uh, Staten Island ferry boat. <laughs> <laughs> At the piano? Yeah, right next to him, of course, is, uh, well, Marty you know, Napoleon. Marty Napoleon. Are you sure, Marty? How yeah. are you? And over here, Ruby Braff. Yeah. Ruby, nice to see you. Pleasure. Let's open up a little bit and get a shot of Cozy Cole back there, too. You My can't, buddy, you can't Cozy Cole. 
Getting back to Ruby Braff, how would you describe him? Well, he's the Ivy League's Louis Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's all what I mean. That's all what I mean. something like that. Actually, I think we do have the solution, because after all, you don't follow a big juicy steak with more steak. What you do is to go on something more, something else, like say ice cream, for example. We have exactly that sort of change coming up right now. In fact, the type of jazz you're about to hear is sometimes referred to as cool jazz. So you can see I wasn't too far off when I talked about ice cream. A cool jazz, as contrasted with most of the so-called hot jazz that we've been hearing this evening, comes as much from the head as it does from the heart. It's the younger generation's kind of jazz. And like a lot of things the younger generation is doing these days, it is both ambitious and imaginative. I suggest you listen closely to the light, lacy feeling and to the ingenious and classical-sounding counterpoint of one of the really great modern jazz groups. We have Art Farmer on trumpet here. There's Art Farmer. And back there on drums, we have Dave Bailey. And on bass, there's Henry Grimes. And of course, on baritone sax, Jerry himself. Here is a Jerry Mulligan quartet. <laughs> Thank you. 
third round. Coming up. a Belgian guitarist, a Cuban drummer, and a great pianist from England, the star of his own group, Mr. George Shearer. demonstrate now for the people that jazz is the player's art rather than the composer's art. Well, that's agree? true, Gary. How does it? Not something we do in the blue note where we're playing now, but this is uh, very definitely true. Well, here is an elegant way of showing you. We'll uh, get uh, George to give me just a uh, one finger rendition of some pretty ballad. You recognize this tune, Gary? George Shearing and his individual group will work this over, then the same identical melody will be taken over by the Dukes of Dixieland. It's all jazz, both of it. Go, George.
It gives me a great chance to see such young fellas playing a style of jazz that was invented, Frankie, long before you were born. How did you get this authentic New Orleans sound? Well, uh, Gary, being from New Orleans and uh, having a father who plays uh, some tailgate trombone, it came by us pretty easy. Dad is uh, with you tonight, isn't he? Oh, yeah, you? Dad's here. Would, uh, would like you to meet him, Papa Let's... Jack. Hi, Hello, Papa Jack. Jack. How are you? Good to see you. Well, here you're going to hear some of the real New Orleans jazz. And just listen. Keep your ears open. This is over the waves, usually a waltz. And listen to the two trombones working together. The Dukes of Dixon. about to hear uh, about here from a girl that I'm sure you will recognize, though she has been known not so much as a jazz singer, but rather as a pop singer. Now, a pop singer, in case you're not entirely aware of it, means, quote, stick close to the melody and sing what the composer felt instead of what you feel or else baby, unquote. Well, this girl loves to sing the way she feels. She loves to sing with jazz musicians working in back of her. So on our Timex All-Star Jazz Show, here she is, a most willing and certainly a most pretty refugee from the land of popular singing, here is Miss J.P. Morgan. My baby don't care for clothes. My baby don't care who knows. My baby just cares for me. My baby don't care for all those high-toned places. My baby don't care for Or any of those other folks 
look He's just as happy as can be as happy as he can be with me. My baby don't care who knows it cause my baby he just cares for me. Such a ball to sing with Gene and Lionel, too. Whew. But you know, I bet you that you were just rocking in your cradle when those two illustrious gentlemen were first rocking the halls not too many short swinging years ago. Maybe so. Maybe that's why I have such a soft spot in my heart for drummers. Oh, really? You like drummers? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I play drums, too, sort of. That's what I've heard. <laughs> that's your secret. Yeah. Why don't we go over and listen? Well, that's the way it goes. All right, let's go over and listen. Pretty. Yeah. Cooper's a real good-looking guy, isn't he? I understand they're making Cooper's life story into a picture. Columbia's putting it out. Yeah. It's a pretty song, Moon Glow. Yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. I have a feeling something's gonna happen. No. Out.
And our deep thanks as well to the folks at Timex for making all this jazz possible. If you would like to have more shows like this, you can. But you'll have to let us know. Write to us. Timex, CBS TV, New York City. I couldn't close the evening without thanking the fine little group, the Dukes of Dixieland, gentlemen, nifty job, Papa Jack, and the fine group back here. This is Buddy Lee's Quartet. And next to me here is my good friend, Randy Hall, on the tin whistle. Seems funny. Seems funny a tin whistle playing jazz, but that's what jazz is like. It's from the heart, it's fun for everyone, whether it's Randy blowing on his 10-cent whistle or whatever it is. And of course, jazz can be sad, too, as anyone who has ever had or has ever heard the blues knows so well. The blues are one of the earliest forms of jazz, and Sash, you've been playing such great blues for so long. Why don't you tell them about it, huh? Well, folks, uh, we get all kinds of blues, sad blues, like the kind we folks used to play back down in New Orleans where we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a uh, gladder blues. That's when you did know where your next meal was coming from. Uh, right, Brother Garrison. <laughs> But let's uh, let Brother George Sherry show us what the real early blues sounded like when one of the New Orleans piano players was feeling good, sad, and sorry for himself. I'm 
out of Hampton drops around. And right away, the blues begin to sound a little happier. Production. And this is Vern Bennett speaking.